If you've been watching my channel for a while, hopefully at this point you've garnered a lot of different strategies, perspectives, exercises, and all the rest that will help you get closer toward your goal of overcoming retroactive jealousy. In short, I hope you've learned a lot of things to do, you know, proactive steps that you need to take. Needless to say, if you read my guidebook, Overcoming Retroactive Jealousy, or if you take either one of my Retroactive Jealousy online courses, you can find the information about those in the description. If you purchase any of my products, you're going to get even more practical, actionable solutions, actionable strategies, actionable exercises, proactive steps that you can take to beat retroactive jealousy for good. However, in today's video, I'm going to talk about, in some ways, the flip side of that equation. While it's so important to focus on what to do when it comes to defeating this particular little issue we call retroactive jealousy, something that a lot of people overlook is it's actually equally important in some ways to stop doing what clearly isn't working. And in today's video, I'm gonna share my thoughts on what not to do when it comes to this issue. My name is Zachary Stockhill from retroactivejealousy.com, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy, overcome obsessive jealousy, and save their relationships. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one, or you'd like more information about my work, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. So this is a mistake that a lot of people make, and I've certainly made this mistake in many different areas of my life, you know? For example, let's take the fitness example. If you want to get in shape or you want to change your diet, for example, you're going to look at all kinds of things to do, right? Gym routines and specific diet plans and a specific nutrition plan that you should follow and a specific amount of water that you should drink and a specific time of day, perhaps, that's best to exercise. You get my drift. Anyone who's gone through a bit of a fitness kick early in this new year probably knows what I'm talking about, you know? We wanna seek out the things to do. Just tell me what to do to get closer to my goal. Tell me what I need to do to get what I want. But frequently what we all overlook in these situations is that it's equally important to figure out very clearly what not to do, what isn't working. All the things that we're doing every day that it doesn't matter what else we do, if we keep doing a certain activities, we're never gonna get closer to our goal. So for example, kind of coming back to the fitness example, and I am by no means a fitness guru, but I mean, I know a little bit about this. You know, you'll find someone who's, who's really overweight and they think, okay, I just need to go to the gym all the time. And they'll go to the gym, you know, five days a week sometimes, and they'll spend an hour or two each time. But if their diet is still nonsense, if they're still eating all kinds of processed food and fast food and all kinds of calories, they can go to the gym all they want nothing is really gonna change. Now, obviously some exercise is better than none. However, in this case, what not to do is actually extremely important. And this person going to the gym all the time is actually overlooking that, thinking that what to do, you know, the proactive steps that they're taking can counteract their bad choices. And frankly, that isn't always the case, particularly for an issue like retroactive jealousy. So for example, just to use kind of a classic example, you probably know uh, my opinion on this by now if you've been watching my videos for a while. Let's say you sign up for my introductory online course, Get Over Your Partner's Past Fast. You've read the testimonials, you've heard me talk about it, you think, you know what, this is great, I'm gonna make this investment. Excellent, join the course, come on in, we'd love to have you. And let's say you really commit to the course. Let's say you commit certain hours in the day to consuming content, performing some of the exercises and doing all the redirecting activities and, and all the rest. But if you're still asking your partner a hundred unnecessary questions about their past every day, guess what? The course will probably be of some help to you, but you're not going to make near the progress that you could be making if you stopped doing what isn't working, if you stopped harassing your partner with more endless questions about their past. And here's the really interesting thing I've learned over almost 10 years of really intensive coaching, particularly on this issue of retroactive jealousy. If you sit someone down and you build up some degree of trust and, and camaraderie and all the rest, pretty soon you'll get them to open up. And frequently, retroactive jealousy sufferers know very clearly, without my having to tell them, exactly what they're doing that isn't working. All the little choices they make every day, all the little things they're doing that are not getting them closer toward their goal, that are actually holding them back. You probably know this too. If you're watching this video and you're struggling with retroactive jealousy, you could probably name one, two, five, maybe 10 different things you're doing when it comes to this particular issue of retroactive jealousy, that if you just stopped doing those things and you didn't take any other steps, 
You didn't you know, change anything in your life. You didn't read a book or take a course or get on a coaching call. You did nothing else. You just stopped doing what isn't working. You may be surprised at the progress you would make simply by not doing certain things. Now, of course, this may not solve your problem entirely. As I often tell people, unfortunately, retroactive jealousy is one of these nasty little issues in life that in general, and I mean the vast majority of cases, does not go away on its own. You are going to have to take certain steps. You are going to be proactive to a considerable degree. However, if you just stop doing what isn't working and nothing else, you'd make a lot of progress. And it doesn't matter how many proactive steps you take, unless you stop doing what isn't working, you're not gonna reach your goal. And if you do reach your goal, it's gonna take you way, way, way longer. I often use the expression, stop spinning your wheels in the mud. So anyone in Canada, certainly, uh, my native Canada, or probably anyone in the United States who's used to driving in snow and rain, if you get stuck in the mud, and that's kind of what retroactive jealousy is like, you feel like you're stuck in the mud. If you just rev the engine faster, if you keep doubling down on what isn't working, you're gonna sink lower and lower and lower and lower in the mud, and it's gonna be even more of a pain to actually get your car moving and on the road again. Whereas if you stop doing what isn't working, you make some changes, you get a friend to give you a push, or <laughs> whatever the case may be, just to kind of extend this analogy further. If you make some changes and you stop doing what isn't working, you're gonna be back on the road, back towards your destination much, much faster. So, a bit of uh, homework, shall we say, for today. If you're watching this video, sit down with yourself, be honest with yourself, which is so incredibly important when it comes to this issue of retroactive jealousy, and ask yourself, what am I doing that isn't working? Put off your search, even just for half an hour, of what could work and solutions and all the rest. It's great if you're looking for solutions. That's more than most retroactive jealousy sufferers do, frankly. It's great if you're doing that, but put that search aside for a minute and just ask yourself, what am I doing that clearly isn't working? And you probably have a lot of evidence that it's clearly not working. Maybe you're getting feedback from your partner, but maybe you're just feeling yourself, you know, I'm not making any progress on this little bastard of an issue <laughs> that we call retroactive jealousy. I'm not any better today than I was a week, a month, two months ago. In fact, maybe I'm worse, you know? And think about all the little things you may be doing that could be holding you back. Just stop doing those things. It's really simple. Now, obviously, you know, I say it's simple. I realize it is easier said than done. Believe me, I get it. As you know, I was once a retroactive jealousy sufferer. And back in the day when I struggled with this issue, it was really difficult to stop asking my partner more questions about her past, more unnecessary questions that I didn't need to know about stupid events that don't matter anymore and all the rest. But in the moment, it was extremely difficult to resist that behavior. But once I started resisting that urge, you know, eventually over time, and there are a lot of other steps involved in this, needless to say, but the point is the more I resisted that urge, the more I really tried to stop doing what isn't working, the better things got, the urge started to fade very slowly and then pretty quickly once I started taking other steps. But the point is, this issue won't improve for you unless you stop doing what clearly isn't working. And I'm not even telling you what isn't working in particular because you probably know yourself, if you're being honest with yourself, what are you doing that isn't working? And try your best to stop doing it, simply. Stop spinning your wheels in the mud. It doesn't work. Keep being proactive. Keep looking for solutions. I think that's great. But at the same time, it's almost as important to stop doing what isn't working. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for hearing me out today. If you got anything out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below, making sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. I'd also appreciate if you left a comment. You know, Maybe you know something right now that you're doing that's not working. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. You can leave a comment beneath this video. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you again very soon.